Hey everybody, I got problems with my camera and my iPad. It's it's dead. Let me let me bring the camera down a little. Sorry, it's rickety. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's see if that's better. Yeah, that's a little better. I still can't get my camera to reverse. Uh, Facebook creator has created something new. Hold on a second, I'm gonna try again. That's better. See if I can twist it around a little. There we go. Sorry, that was n that was not that was bad. But hey, picture's a little clearer now. I don't know what's going on with this new new update on Facebook Creator, but I can't get my book to be correct and I've been doing that for months so that's not making me very happy so hey everybody let me see if I can try one more time Trying to work. Nope, that didn't work. I don't know. I guess I might have to read the instruction manual, you think? Anyway, here we are. It's Thursday. It's a week after Thanksgiving. If you still have leftovers in your refrigerator, they need to go away today. This is the last day. Let's get rid of them. We have a bunch of questions, and I'm going to sort them out. But first, I have a request, and I don't ask you for much. But number one is I need your prayers. Nothing's wrong with me, so don't be, don't get upset. But I have this lawsuit I've been involved in for the last year. And I need, um, we've spent a lot of money because somebody wronged us. That's what you do a lawsuit about because you've been wronged. And I, I need prayers for guidance. So just say a little prayer for me, for Justin and Robert and I to decide what we need to do in the next 12 days. So keep us in your prayers. And the next thing I need uh, for you to do, this is my Christmas present to me from you. <laughs> is As you all know, I have a nephew. His name is Benjamin. And his mother passed away this past summer. And Benjamin has had a rough life. Not making any excuses for him, but he's had a rough life. And the, the day we found out that his mother, my sister, had passed away, I couldn't find him. I knew he was in the prison system in Tennessee, but they wouldn't tell me where he was so that I could tell him his mother had died. And it took me two days to find him. And I was just beside myself. But the reason I couldn't find him 
was because where's my Kleenex is when I need one. Well, I guess I don't need a Kleenex. I got pink rags here. I guess they're good for wiping tears too. Anyway, I couldn't find him. And when he got out of jail a couple of years ago, I pushed him really hard, really hard. I sent him books. I helped him pay for classes to get his GED. I mean, I thought it was important that if you've got your GED, you can do anything if you want to. You can take college courses. You can do a lot of things. And he did it. And he did, he, 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 he did well. I'm not seeing anybody's comments, and I can't figure out why. There they are. Anyway, so the reason I couldn't find him in July was because he had been accepted into a program because he had been uh, two years clean and sober and he had his GED of a thousand people who applied to be in this program as a peer counselor. He was one of three that got accepted to help other inmates in the prison system. And he had gone to another prison system, another prison in the state, which is all the way across the state of Tennessee, in Henning, Tennessee, and I couldn't find him. So I was, I was just so upset because I couldn't find my nephew and I knew he had to be somewhere. I actually knew the warden of the prison in West Tennessee because Ben's mother used to date him. So there, isn't that weird? But it's a long story. It's a small world. It really is. But Ben got into this program and now he's helping people. And I got a message from him yesterday from his girlfriend that he needed eight Alcoholic Anonymous books for his people. So I went online last night and ordered him some books that he could give out or share in, in classes. But yeah, it's just important. Those books are, are super important for people who are going through trying to get sober and clean and, and prison will do that for you. I mean, it really will. Well, here's my request of all of you. I would like you to send him a Christmas card and tell him that you're thinking about him. His, uh, he has a counselor in prison who watches our videos and she has told him lots of things about me because he can't watch them. But he, she has told him that I like saline nose spray and just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, it's funny. But get get a pen and paper and Liz will post this address. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it to you. His name is Benjamin Cheryl. And I can't show it to you because it's backwards now. And I couldn't get that fixed. But his name is Benjamin Sherrill, S-H-E-R-R-I-L-L. And his number is, you have to put that with it. It's 325-281. And here is his address. Bledsoe County Correctional Complex. Bledsoe County Correctional Complex, 1045 Horsehead Road. Horsehead is one word. Horsehead Road, Pikeville, P-I-K-E-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Tennessee, 37367. 37367. So let me try this. Hold on just a second. I'm going to stand up again, and I'm going to try this.
There it is. Okay. I just flipped the camera around and put this behind it. So that's kind of going to be my Christmas present to him. And hey, you might actually send two, one to just any prisoner there. And just to brighten up some other prisoner, prisoner's life. Uh, I don't know if they'll allow that or not, but maybe... The chaplain will hand them out. So that's that's what I want for Christmas is to send Ben stuff. Not stuff, but a Christmas card because you can't send them things. You can only send through the commissary, which is the only way they can get things is is through this one thing. And, and there's only certain times a year you can order. So I think coming up on December is one of those times. So that's where we are now. I appreciate everything you're doing that you're going to do. Say a prayer and keep Ben in your prayers because he's had a tough time. He's had a tough time. Now, I got questions. I got lots of questions. And... The new book is coming out December the 18th. Get it pre-ordered and then you will get it that day on December the 18th. It will come in to you that day. The audio book is going to be available too. I worked hard on that. That's the hardest thing I've ever done. So folks, please, please, please. Now, going back to my nephew, he, this, this certification that he has received because he had his GED and I got the sweetest thank you note from Ben, this certification will go with him outside the prison walls because he will be able to counsel people. I hear something crying. Anyway, he'll be able to counsel people out in the in the normal world so that's what I want for Christmas uh, would you, here's the first question would you please exp explain what a launch pad is I am familiar with the one you have online but I don't know much about the physical one that is set up by the front door of our homes well, think about coming in your front door. There's usually a table there uh, where you can drop your keys and your purse and stuff. What a launch pad is, and this started many years ago. We had a large family uh, that was a, a member of Fly Lady, and she had developed a launch pad that was an old dresser. And she turned it into a credenza and every member of the family had their own drawer and they were big drawers and they could put their backpack in there. They could put their, their instrument in there if they played a small instrument, but they turned this dresser into their launch pad. Now, if you go on Pinterest, you can find a lot of different things to use. As a launch pad sometimes it's a crate that everybody's got their own little crate sort of sideways a little cubby where they can put their shoes if they have different shoes they need to wear or if you don't wear your shoes in the house but you do now because you're a fly baby uh, you can change into your house your house not slippers your house tennis shoes and use use put them on but you can have a little bench there you can have little cubbies underneath the bench and you can use 3m hooks and put them on the wall they have some pretty decorative hooks that will hold a lot of weight or you you get um hooks 
I've got some over the door hooks in my, um, right, that I'm looking at right now in my bedroom because I've left my door open. And the noise I heard was the cat making breathing noises. She is sound asleep. Now, the, these hooks hold backpacks, coats, gloves. It can be a locker type situation like you have at school that each person has their own little locker. And you can buy those. I think I've seen them at uh, Ikea. They're on Amazon. There's lots of different things you can do, but you can get creative with it with just some 3M hooks and some milk crates with a, a board over the top of them and turn them into cubbies and everybody has their own. There's my brother-in-law. So get creative. We have a table by our front door. It's just a little square table that we put things on that need to head out with us. But I also have a little one I didn't want to put my my purse by the front door. I keep my purse by my chair because you you got to grab a credit card out of your purse or whatever. So I ha Robert made me a little shelf with some hooks on it for my keys. That's another thing you keep on your launch pad: your keys, your your um, purse, just little things like that. So keeping it simple, keeping it from getting cluttered up. And you can have a, a beautiful launch pad. The launch pad is just a physical area by the door you leave your house. Now, one lady put a, her calendar right by the front door. I mean, literally by the front door in a frame, a beautiful antique frame. And we've all inherited some of those things, or you can get them at a yard sale. But she put... Um, she put a cork backing in the frame and she hung her calendar there. And that way, when they walked out the door, the last thing they saw was today's date and, and see, you know, what, what you're going to do, what you've got to do today. So keeping it simple and using what you've got, you know, repurpose something. Maybe it's just a little table. Maybe you put your sewing machine by the front door that becomes your, your launch pad. If you've got five kids, you need f each person needs their own little area. So five milk crates would do a great job and with a little bench over the top of them. Use them, you know, you could have a bench and slide these crates underneath and everybody's got their own crate and you can put some um, chalk chalkboard paint on it or some chalkboard stickers and label each each person that's all a launch pad is now this next question she says thanks happy anniversary to you and robert a day early yes tomorrow is our anniversary we've been married almost 22 years time flies when you're having fun and he makes me laugh every single day <sighs> Speaking of Robert, I was wondering if he could share his cookie recipe that has the chopped up candied ginger in it. Well, he explained that recipe to me the other day, well, just a while ago, and chopping the ginger is the hardest part in this recipe. And what you do with, he calls them ginger sparkles. And it's just the base cookie recipe that I've given you with um, one and a half cups of sugar, one and a half cups of, of um, brown sugar. And it's on, the it's on the back of the Nestle's chocolate chip package. And with that, you just add a cinnamon and nutmeg flavoring package to it. It's a spice cookie and you chop up the candied ginger in little tiny pieces, so it takes some doing. But you just get your cutting board and a sharp knife and just start chopping away. And it's sticky and messy, and but that's the hardest part about this cookie recipe, is, add, is cutting up the, the ginger. That's all it is, it's really the hardest part. And you add this to the cookies, and it's kinda like it's a spicy, it's just, 
it, it's just a wonderful, just one, it's a wonderful flavor cookie. But I'll try to get the recipe from him and he's, he's kind of picky about, he tries something different every year. The secret to cookies, everybody, is to put your dough in the refrigerator and let it set for 24 hours or more. My dough's in the freezer right now because I haven't started cooking, uh, baking cookies yet. That's that's for that's for December. I'm gonna bake cookies in December, and I'm gonna add to my cookie dough. I'm gonna make a gingerbread cookie, and I'm gonna make a sugar cookie because everybody likes sugar cookies. And I might make some ginger sparkles. Who knows? Uh, the next question is. Is it too late to start the holiday missions? Well, no. Jump in right where we are. We've got um, mission the, the super cruising missions, which are 15 of them. They'll get you through everything pretty fast. And by December 15th, you'll be done. But we have a basic weekly plan. So you could go back and look at some of the other missions, but think about it this way. Monday is clean and fling. Always clean something and get rid of something on Monday. Tuesday is plan and play. So <clears throat> let's do a little planning. What do you need to buy? Uh, what do you want to cook? Do you need to get the stuff into the house for, for um, stuff in the house for, for baking those cookies? Thursday, Wednesday is always anti-procrastination day. That's when you clean out your refrigerator to get ready to put some of those that cookie dough in there. Because cookie dough, can, if you're going to bake a lot of cookies, it's going to take up a lot of room. And go to my videos and find my cookie tips and my cookie recipe. Because I made uh, three or four batches at one time from one cookie recipe. And Friday is always look at your budget, see what you're spending, stay on top of the things you've ordered, check things off as they come in. And Wednesday, wrap some presents. When, when you get presents in, wrap them and hide them in, in your luggage. Don't tell anybody. Okay. Here's the next one. This is not a question but I would love a bread recipe video. I did that already. It wasn't bread. Well, it was bread, but it was rolls. Um, I taught, taught you how to make roll dough, which you can utilize for rolls, cinnamon rolls. I think I did um, monkey bread, but guess what? You can cut the dough into three pieces, put it into loaf pans, and make bread with it. I've done that. I've got a French bread loaf pan or a, a, a hollow loaf pan, 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 and it just does very nicely in that hollow pan. It's like a braided, I don't know how to braid, but you could braid it too and make a braided loaf because this dough is so forgiving. I love this dough. so. Try using the, the dough recipe that I've already done. How long will the cyber Christmas sale last? So I think I told you in the first video, first uh, announcement of that, that I was going to keep it up until, till I, well, a lot of people get money for Christmas and I'm hoping to leave it up until the new year. That's what I'm hoping. Now we might run out of feather dusters and we might have to send you but we're hopefully getting that those in next week. Uh, but it's going to be okay. I know a lot of you will get money for Christmas. And that way you can use your money to get the things that you really want. And isn't that what Christmas is all about? Getting exactly what you want. Okay, next question. We just decluttered toys. What's the best way to organize what's left for easy play, storage, and cleanup? I would get some milk crates or some wicker baskets, and I would label each one of them per the type of toy. So if it's Legos, all the Legos go in this, this basket. 
If it's trains, all the trains go in this basket. If it's dolls and stuffed toys, they go in their own basket. You know, think about a kindergarten class. In a kindergarten class, there are shelves all the way around the room. And each shelf has a picture because kindergarten kids can't read yet. Well, not all of them. And you put the picture where the train goes or where the fire truck goes. And that way, it's there. They, you, they, everything has a place and everything in its place. Now, my, my brilliant daughter-in-law, she is amazing. She's homeschooling. She is a certified teacher, but she's homeschooling my grandchildren. And I have a grandson that will be 16 on Saturday. It's hard to believe. 16 years old. That's just... I thought my 44-year-old son made me feel old. I think my 16-year-old grandson makes me feel even older. But the, everything has a place and everything in its place. And she would rotate out the kids' toys when they were younger. They had all the Thomas Train stuff and they had Legos and they had Tinker Toys and construction stuff and she would box them up into three separate boxes and then after a month or so she'd put them away because they would get bored with them and then she would bring them out in a couple of months and then they would be like brand new toys again so divide the toys into three groups and then rotate them out every third month bring out a new box get rid of the toys that they've outgrown or that have broken and put them away and then discard the ones they don't play with or donate them and that way you have toys that are relevant to that time period for them you don't want to have sandbox toys when they can't go outside and play in the sand so arrange them that way by the month and write on the you know get one of those um you know put some paint on them or some tape that's that's the different tape and that way you know what's in the box and write it on your calendar to change out the toys at the first of every month so that they have something new to play with because they're going to think it's brand new toys okay how far in advance can I cook my turkey and store in the fridge? Using Leanne's method, will it still be good to cook it on the 22nd of December for Christmas? I have the 23rd and 24th fully booked for celebrating with my husband's parents, one each day, but I don't want to cook on Christmas Day. How do you recommend storing and reheating? I'll tell you. Cook your turkey when you can cook it. And then I want you to take it all off the bone. I know this goes against everything you believe, but I promise it works. And if nothing else, get a blow up turkey to put on the table. This is my blow up turkey. I used it as a centerpiece for my Thanksgiving celebration. Comes in a little tin just like this inflatable turkey <clears throat> it works so what I did is I put it in I, I took the chicken all took the turkey all off the bone I left the legs intact and I took the wings and the carcass and I put it in a stew pot and I cooked it all day and all night and then the next day, I reduced it by half after straining all the stuff out of it. So I would, I put it in a pan and I reduced it down and it was the best gravy I have ever cooked in my life. The best by far gravy I have ever cooked in my whole life because the broth was so rich. I took the skin because it was Leanne's turkey comes out so brown and golden that it makes the best gravy 
and I put all that turkey, I didn't slice up the breast because I don't want it to dry out. I left the breast whole, so you got two halves of the breast. I took the meat off the bone for the thighs and the I left the legs intact and then I put it in a pan with a little bit of chicken broth in it. Covered it up with aluminum foil, put it in a Ziploc bag. You could just put it all in a Ziploc bag with just a little bit of broth. And then put it in my freezer immediately. I cooked the turkey early so y'all could see me cooking the turkey. And then I froze it because I didn't want to cook two turkeys because we don't eat much turkey. And I put it in the freezer and then the the day before, I got it out of the freezer and put it in my refrigerator to thaw. And then the day of, I put it in a, in a pan in my oven at 300 degrees with just a little bit of broth in the bottom, sealed up with aluminum foil, and it was wonderful turkey. And I cooked it a week ahead of time but I froze it. My freezer was my friend during Thanksgiving because I had cooked so much for all of you that I didn't have anything to do the day before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving day, except take everything out, put it in the oven and heat it up. And it worked and it was good. It was really good. And I was not exhausted. So I cooked something every day. I made a video of it for you. And there I had Thanksgiving dinner done. I was so bored the day before Thanksgiving, I had to make a carrot cake. Imagine that. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Leanne's recipe is the best. If you will send me an email with turkey in the subject line, I will automatically send you the the turkey recipe. Well, it has everything else with it. Her Thanksgiving menu mailer. Or you can go on her website and look for Thanksgiving and you can sign up and get it and it gets sent right to you. So you can cook it now and freeze it and then it's done and make your broth. That's the main thing. You can stick it in your crock pot, the carcass in the crock pot to make your broth but it is, it gets so rich and beautiful and it's the best gravy I ever made. And I didn't have to put anything in it to make it brown because it was beautiful. I reduced it down by half and I had two quarts of gravy. I mean it, two whole quarts of gravy. Okay, next question. I've been making cookie dough and freezing it for Christmas cookies. Do you know if I can freeze frosting as well? I do not know that, but frosting usually has cream cheese. You have to send me an email if you want the turkey. You have to send an email to flylady at flylady.net with turkey in the subject line. I can't send it over over Facebook. Do you know if the frosting will freeze? Well, I like cream cheese icing. So cream cheese and you know, a little cream and a little butter and sugar. I bet it would freeze, but make some icing, put it in a little canister, put some in a Ziploc bag, put it in the freezer and tomorrow put a little bit of it in the freezer and see how you might have to beat it up again to to get it to come together well but guess what that's okay that's okay try it test it yourself i don't know i never iced cookies i put i put sugar on my cookies i put just granulated pretty sugar I like the, the big lumpy sugar. Well, that's all the questions I have. We've really gone through a bunch today, but I did have uh, uh, a question. Somebody wanted to know what you do with all the items that are in 
the Fly Lady Complete Cleaning Package, the FCC pack, that we have a huge sale on right now. And that sale is $75 off. And this is the first time we've ever had it under, it's $175, $170. Four dollars and fifty cents, but it's the first time we've ever had seventy-five dollars off of it. So it's ninety-nine fifty. Now, I'm trying to think of everything that's in it. There's a multi wand. I use this thing in my bathroom, and I use it to get the dust bunnies from around the base of the toilet, and sometimes my toilet bowl brush dribbles on the floor so that's got just enough soap that if i wet it i can do the floor with it <laughs> so somebody used this thing the other day for cleaning inside their oven door they took the blanking panel off of their oven and there's an opening because i've seen cobwebs in my oven door but i didn't know how they got in there and Sure enough, it's open under there and you can take this multi wand and do it like a windshield wiper and get the inside of your oven door clean. How cool is that? So this is in there. There is a, a feather duster. We all know what feather dusters are for. There is a toilet bowl brush. Love this thing. This is the greatest tool in the world. There is, where is my carpet? Here we go. There is the, the carpet sweeper. You know, in five, in two minutes, I can run around my house and clean every throw rug I have with this thing. And it does a great job. There are purple rags purple rags you get three of those there is a the regular mop and the mop handle wherever that is anyway mop handle goes with this which it fits the the I don't know where I've put my rub a sweeper our broom I don't know where it is I saw Robert use the broom a while ago we keep one outside on the back porch because it's good for snow but he used it to get leaves off the back back deck he was blowing them and the blower wasn't suiting him so he just pushed them all off with the with the carpet sweeper there's a rubber scrubber there are two mop cloths with the chenille fingers that fit on this Trying to think, what else is in there? Rubber scrubber. I think that's about got it. I don't have a picture of it. But the complete cleaning system, it's got everything you need to keep your house in order. I'm trying to think, floors, feather duster, rub scrub, yep. It's 11 things, I believe. So it's a great deal at $75 off. And if you want that for Christmas, you need to tell somebody because they can't read your mind. Or if you're going to get money for Christmas, you, you can, uh, it'll be up until, un, until probably the first of the year. That's what I'm thinking. So folks, don't procrastinate. Procrastination usually hurts. Who gets hurt with procrastination? It's us. We're the ones that get hurt. So don't procrastinate. Uh, what else is going on? Try to think. Any more questions? Let's see if I see some of your questions. Rubber sweepers are good. The rubber sweeper is good for collecting Legos. Not the carpet sweeper, but the little, the little broom. I don't know where I've done it, where I've put it. I had, it, it was on the counter, and I put it somewhere. It's probably in a safe place. Imagine that. Well, folks, 
I'm going to get off of here. Y'all have a good day. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for um, the Christmas cards you're going to send to my nephew. And, you know, thank you for being my friend. Sometimes you feel alone, especially when you work from home. And y'all are like family to me. So thank you so much for, for being my friend and being here for me and that I can share, you know, my heartfelt thanks and sadness and you've been there through everything. I love you all. And I will, let's see what, <laughs> my brother-in-law sent me that. Look at that, it's backwards. But I've got to get that fixed because I can't stand holding things up and then being backwards. That makes me mad. Get the book ordered. It'll be available the 18th. And if you pre-order it, you'll have it in the mail that day. It'll come the day it comes out. It really will. So download your holiday control journal. It's free. It's in the control journal section on our website. And Liz, Liz can post a, um, but it's not too late. It's just November the 29th. We got a whole month before Christmas and we can be ahead of the game. We really can. I think I've gotten most of my Christmas shopping done. I, I have a funny story to tell you. I have a niece, great niece, and she wanted a pair of boots, but the boots were so ugly, <laughs> I wasn't going to buy them for her. I just, I just couldn't spend, I couldn't buy something that ugly, so I sent her a gift card, and she recognized right quickly, <laughs> There's a method to my madness. She recognized pretty quick that she had this Christmas list and she had a lot of things on it. She could either buy one pair of boots that were god awful ugly or five other things on her list. Imagine that. Now I have a story to tell you. I'm getting sidetracked here. But when Justin was little, I think he was in about the eighth grade, maybe ninth grade, he wanted a pair of Air Jordans tennis shoes. And, you know, we lived on a school teacher's salary. My, Justin's dad was a school teacher. I didn't make but about $100 a week. And, you know, they were kind of out of our budget. I couldn't spend almost $200 on a pair of shoes that that he was going to wear until he outgrew them. I told him, I said, Justin, if you want those boots, if you, they weren't even boots, they were shoes. They were lace-up tennis shoes that the tongue would pump up. I said, if you want those shoes, this was during the summer, you can mow some yards and do some things and earn some money and you can buy them. I'm not going to stop you from buying them, but you got to buy them with your own money. Well, he saved up, and I took him to town. We lived about 30, 30 miles from the nearest town. There wasn't an Amazon to order them on. And we went to town, and he bought these shoes. And when he got in from school after wearing them, he cleaned them up if they got a little scuff on them because they were white tennis shoes with an Air Jordan symbol on it. And he would clean up the little scuff marks and he put them in a place of honor in his closet. Now he couldn't have been more than 13 or 14. And he hadn't grown into his normal size. I think they were like a size 10 or 11. He wears a size 12 now. And he treasured those shoes. He wouldn't walk through a mud puddle. 
he made sure they were always clean. And when he got married, when he got married um, almost 20 years ago, he still had those shoes. He was 24. 24. And he still had those shoes that he had paid for with his own money. Now, what I gave my little great niece, she didn't earn it, but she saw the value. Instead of buying the ugly boots, she bought something a little more practical that she could wear more often. And I'm not talking, they were Doc Martens that were white. I'm just, <laughs> her mother and I both agreed we were not going to buy them for her. She ended up with some Converse All-Stars that were pink. But you know, you can wear pink with a lot of things. Just like you can wear purple with a lot of things. So folks, think about what you're giving this Christmas. Maybe somebody can learn something from it. And let me tell you, the best way to save money is to stay out of Walmart. Or if you have to go into Walmart, go in with a list. We had to go into Walmart the other night. We had to get some Alka-Seltzer something and some Pepto-Bismol because I had run out and I had needed it the night before. I had some, but I used it all. And we needed two things. We did pick up a flat of dog food, but that's all we added to our list because that was something we had to have. We got dogs. Go in with a list. Stick to your list. The same thing at the grocery store. Stick to your list. Do not buy more than's on your list. It's going to save you a lot of money if you will just stay true to your list. You'll be so surprised how much money you can save. And if you spread going to Walmart out, don't go every week. Don't do it. I know you think you have to, but you don't have to. I promise. You really do not have to go every week. If you start stocking up on some things, if you now I keep a lot of toilet paper in the house. Robert thinks I'm nuts. But I don't want to have a snowstorm and not have any toilet paper, you know? I want to have plenty. It's like, And I want to have Ziploc bags in the house. I want, Robert likes to have paper towels, so I, we make sure he has his paper towels. I don't use paper towels unless I'm drying out the inside of my iron skillet because it has messed up plenty of my white dishcloths that I love. So, you know... Start stocking up. If you don't know how much stuff you need to stock up on, write the date that you open up a bottle of something and know that you have to ha you go through that in six months' time. And you know for a year you need two of them. It's, it's common sense. I, ha I had a friend of mine, and she used to have this saying that her daddy taught her, and and she's dead and gone now, but Miss Patsy would say, common sense is a lost commodity. And it really is. You just have to think just a little bit. And you can do things. My cat's snoring up a storm. Can you hear her? <laughs> okay, everybody. I love you all. I will talk to you later. And tomorrow is my anniver our anniversary, 22 years. I asked Robert last night, I said, does it seem like we've been married 22 years? And he looks at me like that's a trick question. And he said, no. And I said, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And he said, it's a good thing because we laugh every day. We really do. We laugh every single day. Y'all have some fun today. Get some things done that you don't have to think about again for next till next week. 
Get your refrigerator cleaned out if you didn't do it yesterday. Let's get some stuff done. I love you all. I've said that many times, but I'm getting out my little magic wand and I'm going to hit the finish button. Bye.